outside the John F. Kennedy Hospital in Monrovia, Liberia. 20-year-old uh, Ibaga Stiwo is sick. Oh, Dao. Oh, Dao. But now I would do now. His parents wait beside him. All signs point to the late stages of Ebola, oh. the deadly virus that's killed more than 2,300 across West Africa. He just vomiting, he tolling, vomiting, tolling, vomiting, tolling. He eat, he vomit. Eh. You got to get a paper back. Ah. As sick as he is, ah. he won't be allowed inside. Ah. The largest hospital in the nation and many others just like it are completely full. But I want to tell you, any hospital now will go to the same month. They say we should wear the title should come. This is Ben C. Solomon in Monrovia, Liberia. This city of one and a half million is the first major metropolitan area to face an Ebola outbreak since the virus was discovered in 1976. Hundreds have died here since the outbreak began in May. And the World Health Organization expects thousands of new cases in the coming weeks. With a limited number of hospital beds and personnel to treat the sick, many of the infected are left to die at the hospital gates. It's heartbreaking. There's nothing I can do about it uh, because I have no space, I don't have the capacity. Local and foreign-run treatment centers alike are unable to cope with the surge. Here are the Doctors Without Borders treatment center. They too are at capacity. What we're looking at here is about uh, 350 bed hospital. Never, no one has never done this before. To turn people away at the door that are sick, that is a new experience and, and a difficult one to handle because we are full every day. We are not capable of building fast enough. 10 to 15 die each day here, but their beds are quickly filled. The virus is spreading fast among families in Monrovia's slums. And with an incubation period over several weeks, no one knows exactly how many more patients will arrive in the months ahead. If you look back in time, uh, MSF have been able to cope with outbreaks that have been going on from year to year because they have been small. But at the moment, we are down on our knees. So who else is there? After a few hours outside, the crown formed around Ibaga and his family. Many were angry, urging them to go home. They say because of the virus, the people will not look at us, so we should carry them back to the house. The hospital worker finally came out to calm the crowd. The wall is full. No capacity. You understand? So I did, I did, I did, I did not elaborate. I did not the four feet of Jeff is very big. Later in the afternoon, Ibago was finally admitted. But for his family, what comes next remains a mystery. Every day they make an announcement. We, when you get a safe patient, we pull a safe patient. Same with me. Nothing they are done. Get them all, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're waiting. We don't know what to do.